Hey there guys. So this weekend of the 5th of September to the 8th of September, I had gotten my hands on the beta for Ghost Recon Breakpoint. This video isn't going to be a review in any way as the game is still in beta and it wouldn't be very fair of me to judge it too much right now as the devs could very well fix the things that are wrong. This is just me giving my impressions of the game and how I feel about it in general up until this point. Other than that, it isn't going to be very in-depth as I will be focusing on what we know about the story so far, the gameplay experience, graphics, and, of course, glitches. The game is being developed by Ubisoft Paris and will be published by Ubisoft. Release date is October 4th, 2019 for PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4, with Google Stradia seeing the game November 19th, 2019. PC version can be bought on Uplay or the Epic Store. Ghost Recon Breakpoint plays off in the year 2023, four years after the events of Ghost Recon Wildlands, marking this as a sort of a sequel, I suppose. The game plays off in the island of Aroa, in the South Pacific, which is owned by a billionaire called Jace Skell. Skell founded Skell Technology, a company that specializes in drones for more commercial uses, though the company is also a success as a military contractor developing equipment for the United States government. Originally buying the island with a vision of turning it into a space for the design and research as well as development and production of artificial intelligence. The island is a vast space with lakes, forests, wetlands, snow mountains, and even sporting an active volcano. The game drops into the boots of Nomad, member of an elite team known as Ghosts. You are tasked with the investigation into the mysterious loss of the USAC, which sunk near the island of Aroa, home of Skeltic. The company, having faced mounting evidence of their product being used by less than savory governments and regimes, starts coming under fire from the public, with the eventual implication of them being part of an assassination, causing them to cut all ties with the outside world. This, in turn, prompts the government into sending the player, and their team, to the island where the helicopter is shot down, with the player of course surviving, forcing you to survive on the equipment you scavenge from your enemies, and the large number of them, under the command of a private contractor called Sentinel. Character creation in this game is based off the one that they use for Wildlands, male and female gender options, and some basic facial structure choices. Honestly, if you play Wildlands, then you will immediately know what the character creation is like and won't need much introduction to it. Best way I can describe this game is Wildlands meets The Division. You have the huge open world of Wildlands with all the vehicles, cars, bikes, trucks, and one helicopter in the beta, while integrating the general mechanics of the loot and leveling system of The Division. The difference with this is that you can play solo. There are no AI partners as far as I can tell. To have a bigger squad meant teaming up with friends or with other people. Something I noticed though is that you actually have dialogue options now and can interact more freely with certain NPCs, asking them questions for or information about your mission. Though I feel like this gives a new dimension to the game with immersing you a bit more in what you're doing, it still felt a bit on a strange side to me. It was something I could get used to though. You also now have to find blueprints of weapons and attachments scattered all over the world instead of just outright buying them. You can get them for free if you do this. As for stores, yeah those are a thing now in this Wildlands type sequel. There's only one and it sold literally everything. From weapons and armor to attachments and clothing. Ubisoft made things a bit easier for us with the beta by giving us 30,000 Skeltic credits, in-game currency so that we could just go nuts and buy whatever we wanted off the store, just to test it out for the beta. So there was no real grinding for us to do at this point. Though I have to admit, seeing the amount of credits you picked up from bodies, or sometimes got as rewards, wasn't that much, so it might take you a while to work up to the amount that you want to get, so that you can buy the things you want. On the upside, it does drop quite often from enemies. This time, there are classes also in this game. Yep, just like the vision. You also level up and spend points in unlocking new skills and abilities. Gone is the supply system that was utilized in Wildlands. Which, honestly, I appreciated that. I kinda hated that Wildlands would force me to scour for minuscule amounts of supplies and cargo just to level up my skills. It felt way too grindy for me and took away from doing the things that I wanted to do because I was too weak to get to do the fun stuff. But 
I digress. This isn't about wild dance, this is about breakpoint. You do have an ultimate ability now though, with how things are set up in this game. There are different routes and skill trees. I took the panther route, some kind of a stealth fighter, where my ultimate ability allowed me to pop a cloud of smoke and just get away from enemies that way, like distract them. It took a bit of getting used to as I actually kind of kept forgetting about it because my mind was telling me I was playing Breakpoint and I w which Wildlands, you know, and it wasn't Division where <laughs> popping your alt is a good thing. <laughs> the multiplayer was rather fun as my friend and I sometimes just goofed off or had rather strange glitches happen to us. The fun thing was running him over though. Don't worry, he ran me over too so it was all fair in the end. Sadly when I played the multiplayer, I didn't go back to the single player experience much, it just wasn't that fun for me. I had way more fun just being in the multiplayer with friends, so that's something I would recommend on that level. Well, time to get on to graphics and glitches. Not sure how to approach this topic, never really had to sp well, speak about it much before. Well, I played the game on high settings first, until eventually I just bumped it up to very high settings. In both cases there were some parts of the game that looked a bit blocky? It was odd. Fires had a strange kind of pixelated look to them and I didn't really want to bump up the graphics anymore because it was kind of hot that day when I was recording and I didn't want to melt my computer. Apart from that, well, graphics was overall pretty solid looking. The only gripe I had is that it felt like some of the assets for enemies that they used was just copied and pasted out of Wildlands. They just gave them new uniforms. There were some interesting glitches though. There was a stage where I crashed into a tree and somehow I just shot up like a rocket up the tree, like the tree trunk and ended up in the branches for about a minute before I eventually fell down. And I'm sad it happened when I wasn't recording. I was just kind of goofing off to see what glitches could happen just from running around in the world. Another glitch that popped up off recording was I somehow got stuck in the side of a mountain behind the textures and it took me running around for like five minutes in my little box of space before I somehow managed to stumble out of it. I still don't know how I did it, it just happened. At one point my friend actually got on a bike and the bike tipped on its side with him on it and he was stuck in the ground, he couldn't move, he couldn't do anything, he had to get off the bike, then get back on it again. While at the exact same time this was happening, I got stuck in a wooden fence with a car. It ju I just got stuck there. It was a hilarious moment and I'm lucky I caught that and I will definitely include it in this. I just didn't expect that to happen. It was strange, but funny. So I wasn't too mad about it. So my final impression for the game or my final word on this is personally I actually liked it and I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. But there were things that I had personal gripes with and didn't like. I can see the game suffering the same thing that Wildlands and Division did for me. I will get bored because the missions will be repetitive even if they have a different script and setting for it. It will turn into a grind fest on another large map that will have me feeling bored throughout. Only good thing I can see is that it is easier for me to play with friends and just run around together on the open world. It has some solid gameplay and the graphics isn't too bad, pixelated fires notwithstanding. Though I do hope that they fix up the glitches that I encountered so that it doesn't break immersion or frustrate people. Other than that, if you were a fan of Division and Wildlands then you will probably enjoy this title. It has a lot of great qualities. It just isn't something I can see myself buying on release though. I will probably hold out for a sale as last time I went into full price on one of these types of games, I ended up getting bored and felt angry with myself for spending such a large amount of money on a game that I just couldn't get back into after playing it for a few hours. So I'd suggest holding out for a sale if you're not very sure about this game because like I said it's gonna feel grindy after a while. It's just another grind fist on a large map.
So guys, I would like to remind you that this is just my views and impressions on a game. This isn't a review. It's a solid game, really. And like I said, if it's something that you're a fan of, then you'll have fun with this. I hope that my time with this and my views have cleared up some things for you with the game. If you have any questions, you can leave them for me down in the comments and I will get to them as soon as possible. Remember to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell if you wanted to stay updated with my uploads. Discord and Twitter links are below and guys, everyone is welcome. Until next time, I'll see you later.